the GeForce RTX 20 series computer graphics reinvented. And then the RTX 2080 Ti, 10 gig arrays. I love gig arrays. <laughs> 10 gig arrays. Shoot as many rays as you like. Go crazy. Just shoot rays. 78 trillion RTX ops. Come here, Papa. All righty. 3090 is a beast. A ferocious GPU. A BF GPU. 36 shader teraflops. 69 RT teraflops. Ampere is a giant leap in performance. Ampere does two shader calculations per clock versus one on Turing. Ampere doubles ray triangle intersection throughput. The GeForce RTX 4090. NVIDIA engineers push technologies on every front. New RT core with opacity micromap and micro mesh engines. Compared to the world's reigning GPU champion, the 3090 Ti, 4090 is two times faster on Microsoft Flight Simulator, three times faster on Portal RTX, and four times faster on RacerX. All right, guys, how's it going? Somewhat predictably, my last two videos have ruffled a few feathers among the NVIDIA fanboy crowd. Make no mistake about it, I fully expect AMD to thump NVIDIA next year, in raster performance at least, and that is of course assuming that they do have a 7950 XTX in the works. And the NVIDIA fanboys have done the maths on it as well, and they know it's true. So, even more predictable was their shifting of goalposts regarding what constitutes a viable card. <laughs> it seems that ray tracing is now the number one most important factor for some people. And it's beginning to feel a little bit like when I lived through this same thing 13 years ago with the HD 5870 versus Fermi, when all of a sudden tessellation performance was all that mattered. On that subject, I do not like outliers. And in fact, I've made at least two videos detailing why, including the big one on NVIDIA, which showed how they managed to cheat a win with their Fermi-based GTX 460 graphics card simply by flooding the Hawks 2 benchmark, and Unigini as well, with insane levels of tessellation, which although it killed the frame rate on their own cards, killed it even more on ATI's cards at the dawn of the DX11 era. But with Nvidia's 4090 launch, ray tracing does now appear to no longer be, in many cases, an FPS killer. So has this validified Nvidia's strategy of hugely increasing RT performance with every generation? Or is it something else? The answer to that will hopefully be uncovered in this video. So I started this investigation over at Tom's Hardware, who very quickly realised that the 4090 is a true 4K card, and buying one for any resolution below that is likely a waste of money. In their 8 game average, they found the 4090 to be 55% faster than the 6 month old 3090 Ti, this is in line with the 56% I noted overall in the Reddit meta-analysis last video. On my first closer inspection, this struck me as surprising due to Tom's inclusion of Flight Simulator, but as you can see the 4090 is only 11% faster than the 3090 Ti. However, I then noticed that they had also added Total War Warhammer 3 where the 4090 wins by a colossal 112%, which of course evened out the flight sim result. Honestly, I'd definitely ditch Flight Simulator, as these results are never going to change, and each new card will perform around 10% faster than the last gen. Warhammer 3 though, that's an interesting one, for sure, and I wouldn't mind seeing more benches on this, but regardless of all that, I'm more interested in the ray tracing performance. And according to Tom's, over six games, all of which support NVIDIA's RTX branding, I believe, the 4090 came in 78% ahead of the 3090 Ti, which at first glance would have you believe that while ray tracing, the 4090 is another 23% faster than the 3090 Ti. These ray tracing numbers did include a 106% win in Fortnite, however which is an online multiplayer game, and it can't be that easy to benchmark consistently. 
But the real problem here was, over all these six ray traced benchmarks, none of them were benchmarked without ray tracing. So I couldn't get an apples to apples comparison. And I couldn't help but get the feeling that we were very much seeing a best case NVIDIA RTX showcase here. My next stop was at TechSpot, who partially did the kind of testing that I really wanted to see. My interest here is this. As you saw at the top of the video, NVIDIA are hugely increasing their ray tracing performance every generation. When the 2080 Ti launched four years ago, in September 2018, NVIDIA claimed ray tracing performance of 10 giga rays per second. I love giga rays. And 78 trillion RTX ops. Two years later though, this was marketed as 34 RT teraflops, which with the next generation Ampere, 3090, increased to 58 RT teraflops including twice the ray triangle intersection, NVIDIA claimed a performance increase of around 80% higher than Turing. And now, with the recent launch of Lovelace, NVIDIA once again doubled the ray triangle intersection, while also claiming a huge increase to 200 RT teraflops. So in four years, from Turing to Lovelace, NVIDIA, by their own numbers, has increased ray tracing performance by almost six times, with the majority of that increase coming between Ampere and Lovelace. Now, scrolling down to TechSpot's ray tracing performance benchmarks, starting with F122, and I am going to ignore 1440p for obvious reasons, while concentrating solely on 4K, non DLSS, of course. In Formula 122, the GeForce RTX 1490 scored 279 FPS, that's with RT off, and 103 frames per second with RT on. And we can see that the 3090 Ti scored 173 with ray tracing off, and 54 with RT on. In Watch Dogs Legion, the 1490 scored 141 frames per second in raster, and 74 in ray tracing while the 3090 Ti scored 86 frames per second in raster and 44 ray tracing. In Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy, the 4090 scored 187 frames per second in raster and 98 while ray tracing, while the 3090 scored 128 and 62 frames per second respectively. Moving on to Dying Light 2, the 4090 scored 173 frames in raster and 58 in ray tracing whereas the 3090 Ti scored 78 and 27 frames respectively. And TechSpot's fifth and final ray tracing benchmark was Cyberpunk 2077. The 4090 scored 83 frames per second in raster and 45 FPS ray tracing, with the 3090 Ti scoring 55 and 25 frames per second respectively. And comparing the results in a game by game basis gives us this. In F122, the 4090 was 61% faster in raster and 91% faster while ray tracing. That's a pretty good 30% increase. In Watch Dogs 2 Legion, the 4090 was 64% faster in raster, faster in raster, <laughs> and 68% faster while ray tracing. That's not so good. In Guardians of the Galaxy, the 4090 was 46% faster in raster and 58% faster in ray tracing. A Dying Light 2 threw up a really strange result. The 4090 was 122% faster in raster and 115% faster in ray tracing. That is really not good. And finally, Cyberpunk 2077, the 4090 was 51% and 80% faster respectively, which is pretty good again, almost 30%. Now, as said, I do not like outliers, but what I dislike even more is results like this. There's two decent increases, around about 30%, then you've got this kind of lowish 12%, and then two games where the relative ray tracing performance has barely improved, or has in fact, in the case of Dying Light 2, got even worse. On average, and this is of course based on the frames per second totals, it's not an average of the average, in raster, the 4090 is 66% faster at 4K and 78% faster while ray tracing at 4K. 
And all of that extra ray tracing hardware is only resulting in a 12% increase in ray tracing performance relative to the raster performance. There is nothing at all wrong with TechSpot's testing, but it left me feeling pretty unsatisfied with my investigation so far. But it had given me an idea, and I had one more stop to make. Over at Tech Power Up, who did exactly the kind of testing I wanted to see, Tech Power Up benchmarked 8 games with ray tracing on and off. But even better than that was, they included the Turing 2080 Ti in their benchmarks. So again, all results will be taken at 4K resolution. As with before, I just added all the numbers to the spreadsheet. On the left are the 4K raster totals, and on the right are the 4K ray tracing totals. Over the 8 games, the 4090 averaged 152.3 frames per second in raster, and 97.5 frames per second in ray tracing. The 3090 Ti averaged 97.7 FPS in raster, and bang on 60 in ray tracing, and the old 2080 Ti, it averaged 58.1 FPS in raster and 34.3 FPS in ray tracing. Now, analysing these numbers shows us something quite unexpected, at least given how much the 4090 has been lauded. By Tech Power Up's numbers, the 4090 was 56% faster in raster. That's over the 3090 Ti. And as we saw before with the Reddit meta-analysis, that is basically bang on what other review sites found. However, what might come as a surprise is that the 3090 Ti is actually 68% faster than the 2080 Ti. That's at 4K though again. But if you think about it, flagship versus flagship of each generation, the 3090 Ti actually had more of an increase over the 2080 Ti than the 4090 had over the 3090 Ti. Now, of course, there will be a 4090 Ti next year, which should help to close that gap a little bit. I'll talk a bit more about this in a minute, though, but I need to, first of all, deal with the ray tracing totals. Compared to the 3090 Ti, the 4090 is 62% faster while ray tracing, which is only a 6% improvement over the comparative raster performance. But what's even worse than this is that the 3090 Ti is 75% faster than the 2080 Ti, which is a 7% improvement while ray tracing over the comparative raster performance. No matter how you look at it, Nvidia has thrown a bunch more ray tracing resources at Lovelace compared to Ampere, yet the performance increase generation to generation has basically gone nowhere. Now, for the sake of completion, Here's the results of the 4090 versus the 2080 Ti. Again, 4K. The 4090 was 162% faster in raster and 184% faster in ray tracing. And if you think about it, this is basically best case for the 4090 and worst case for the 2080 Ti. 4K resolution, basically. And yet the relative increase in RT performance is only 22%. 22% increase in four years. Now, there may be some confounding factors at work here. And the most obvious one would be that at 4K, and especially with ray tracing, the 2080 Ti is likely to be heavily bottlenecked by now. And I would normally have used 1440p numbers because of that. But the problem with that is, we saw already that in 1440p raster, the 4090 would be heavily bottlenecked. We've even seen that at 4K raster, the 4090 can be bottlenecked. And that's actually a point worth noting too. Because yeah, sure, while the 2080 Ti's numbers are very likely to be reduced because of the resolution, the 4090's numbers are actually likely to be improved. Because some of the 4090's raster numbers included in these benchmarks are likely also bottlenecked. But in an effort to remove the 2080 Ti's 4K bottleneck, I did decide to lastly run the 1440p numbers. Again, as I said, the problem at 1440p is going to be obvious. 4090 will be heavily bottlenecked in raster performance, which will make its relative ray tracing performance look a lot better. But anyway, the 4090's average FPS in raster is 208.3, Compared to 157 in the 3090 Ti and 100.4 for the 2080 Ti. 
In ray tracing, these numbers were 146.7, 101.1 and 60.6 respectively. And again, averaging those out as a percentage of FPS, that is, shows that the 4090 is now only 33% faster than the 3090 Ti in raster, and it is 45% faster in ray tracing. So that's pretty much what I would have expected to see. The 4090 is indeed heavily bottlenecked in raster at 1440p, and this reduction in raster has basically meant that the ray tracing performance appears to have doubled from 6% to 12%. In actual fact, both numbers have dropped considerably from the 4K numbers. Regarding the 3090 Ti versus the 2080 Ti at 1440p, both ray tracing and raster numbers have dropped a little. The 3090 Ti is now 56% faster in raster and 67% faster in ray tracing. And remember, compared to before, that was 68% faster in raster and 75% in ray tracing at 4K. And finally, 4090 is now only 107% faster in raster and 142% faster in ray tracing versus the 2080 Ti. And if you compare those totals to the totals at 4K, this essentially confirms my suspicion that the 4090 would be heavily bottlenecked at 1440p, and it is, while the 2080 Ti was heavily bottlenecked at 4K ray tracing. So perhaps the fairest thing to do is use the 4K results for the 4090 versus the 3090 Ti and that gives us a ray tracing improvement of 6%. And then the more fair thing to do with the 2080 Ti is use the 1440p results versus the 3090 Ti and we get a ray tracing improvement of 11%. And I don't have to tell you that that is pretty disappointing stuff from the new NVIDIA GPU. Right, to finish this off, what is going on here? You saw NVIDIA's CEO Jensen Huang stating the increase in RT teraflops generation over generation. It is crystal clear, however, that in gaming at least, NVIDIA hasn't reached anywhere near that increase. But that's in gaming. In 3D modelling, etc., performance is seen at over twice the level of Ampere. Here we can see V-Ray, where the 4090 is more than twice faster than the 3090, that's the non-TI version of Ampere. And here's another one for V-Ray, where the 4090 is more than double the 3090 Ti. And we can also see that the 3090 Ti is more than double the 2080 Ti. And Otoy are also claiming a two times increase over the 3090. Now it's not quite the 3 times to 3.5 times faster as claimed by Jensen's RT teraflops, which is a bit of an odd calculation and it does use some tensor operations in that calculation as well, something like 20%. But even though it's not reaching 3x or 3.5x, it's still a mile ahead of the 6 to 12% increase that we see in gaming. Now, the most obvious reason for this is 3D modelling uses a hell of a lot more ray tracing than the average game. However, even with that, the results still don't make a huge amount of sense. And in fact, as you saw, the 4090 sees a decrease in relative frame rate to the 3090 Ti when RT is turned on in some games. We saw that over at TechSpot, for example, where in Dying Light 2, we saw a 7% decrease. And over at Tech Power Up, we saw a drop in Far Cry 6 and in Resident Evil Village, and Watch Dog Legion was basically a wash. Even more bizarre is that versus the 2080 Ti, the 4090 lost some frame rate in ray tracing in a couple of games. Again, Far Cry 6, Resident Evil Village. It actually lost even more than it did compared to the 3090 Ti. This is at 4K with ray tracing on. Why is that happening? The 4090 has like 50% more bandwidth and around double the shader performance relative to the 2080 Ti. It's got anything between four and six times the ray tracing performance. And how much more L2 cache does it have compared to the 2080 Ti? Something like 18 times more L2, which Jensen said really helped with ray tracing. Yet relative to the raster results, performance is still dropping in some games. We can also see it's vastly higher in, say, Cyberpunk. But we can also analyse that one, obviously, and say that clearly the 2080 Ti by now is totally bandwidth-starved in that game. 
it's much more difficult to look at the 4090 and analyse why these numbers are happening. Now there is one slight confounding factor here in that frames per second is not the best way to measure performance, actually. Frame times are better, but that kind of testing wasn't done. Regardless of everything, it is still very obvious that ray tracing carries a significant performance penalty, even with Lovelace. And if you just say, like, let's just call it a double of ray tracing every generation for NVIDIA, it has been seen on average about an 8 to 9% improvement over raster performance every new generation. Raster is improving by 50 to 60%, ray tracing is improving by 10%. And I think maybe some people didn't quite understand what's happening here when they say Lovelace is great at ray tracing. Lovelace is great at ray tracing and ray tracing is now viable at 4K, but it's not because Lovelace got that much better at ray tracing, it's because it's got that much better at raster. It is just that much faster at raster. And we know that when a graphics card is generating frames, that they are drawing triangles, they're shading and tracing rays now, and NVIDIA would have us believe that the RT component takes less time than shading. It really should be taking even less time with Lovelace. But it's clear that whenever rays are being traced, overall graphics card performance is severely reduced. Could it be related to bandwidth then? Who knows? And I really don't want to make it look as simplistic as simply a bandwidth issue. But if it is, NVIDIA has got a problem that cannot be solved simply by throwing more RT teraflops at their graphics cards. That much should be clear. And unfortunately for them, increasing memory bandwidth, that is a much more difficult engineering and cost challenge. Maybe they can throw high bandwidth memory at it, but that is going to hit you hard in the pocket next generation, if so. And if you look at this video of F122, that was one of the benchmark games, and we're seeing a loss of between 100 and almost 200 frames per second for the 4090 at specific parts of this benchmark, which is, in my opinion, of questionable worth. Now, other games do do a better job, like Metro Exodus, for example, in both image quality and in performance. One major issue here is something that I mentioned in my Beyond Turing video, and that is that RTX is actually still more work for the video game artists. The whole point of ray tracing is that it was supposed to lessen the workload, but it's not. And look, that's not to say that the whole idea should just be abandoned. I don't believe it should be. I just think that Nvidia may be throwing good money after bad here with Lovelace. And at current estimates, it's going to be, what, another 20 years before ray tracing performance is actually free in terms of frames per second cost. And with the recent release of the RTX 4080, and AMD's cards are not that far off either. I might do a follow-up to this video soon. There may just be more than one way to skin a cat. And I think if a 7950XTX is in the works and is released, it might not actually be that far off the 4090's gaming ray tracing performance as you might expect. We'll see about that soon enough though. I'll catch you later guys.